What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is week five of the locker room in season eight of the GBA, the San Francisco Giant Ace, our team building for Coach Z and the Columbus Chew. This guy, super mysterious. I don't know a lot about him. I've never battled him before. Um, and his videos, he doesn't give away a lot about his technique, his style. Like, I don't know how to read him. He's uh, He doesn't have the greatest starting record, uh, so... I don't want to read too much into that. I don't have a very good starting record and I personally don't feel like I'm the type of coach who's only a 25% win rate kind of coach. Uh, but I had a rocky start. He's had a rocky start. He's got a lot of threats. And uh, let's talk a little bit about building for those threats. Uh, before I do, I want to talk about some internal matters. First of all, I, uh, I did a few changes over the last week. Uh, I changed my Zmon and I made a trade. So the Z trade I made, the Z swap I made was uh, to make Blacephalon no longer my Z captain and switch that to Haxorus. Uh, I did that because I think Haxorus is less dependent on his item. Uh, Blacephalon can make massive use of choice items and Haxorus can too, but I believe Haxorus's coverage makes it more beneficial for him to have Z items and Dragon Dancing into into Z Dragon Attacks is just so amazing uh, and the coverage options that Haxorus has I think makes it a lot more threatening. Blacephalon doesn't really have a lot of setup opportunity. It does have Calm Mind but it's not the greatest user of it just because it's just so frail so it's really rare that it'll get the opportunity to do that. 107 base speed is good but I think is better if you're going for a speedy sweep with him, better to pack a scarf on him. Going for a wall breaker set, better to pack a specs on him. And especially with uh, the way Mind Blown works, I just, I find it better used on Haxorus. That also netted me 50 additional points and I used those points as leverage to get a trade off with Chimpact. So I traded him my Slurpuff and I got and 20 Z points and in return I got Rabombi. Both of these mons are lower tier mons. The reason I made this trade is Rabombi gives me an even higher speed tier, um, which I think is really useful. And as far as a dragon check, I actually think it's better than Slurpuff is. And the reason for that is Slurpuff is really non-threatening until it successfully does some kind of setup. Now you can run Calm Mind sets, I don't find those that effective, but they do they do work. As far as its bulk, it's lackluster. Most dragons can beat it with even marginal coverage. Its speed is lackluster, its attack is lackluster, unless it belly drums. So really I have a mon that sets up sticky webs but not that well and can sweep but not that well. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to wall it. Even belly drum sets, I've I've been checking them out every week, and I just I wasn't seeing anything from them. So to me, Slurpuff felt like it wasn't doing for my team what I wanted it to do. Whereas Rabombi has an opportunity to actually do that. Uh, I like that it still has sticky web, so I still have that option. It can set up on things with Quiver Dance, which I think is amazing, and. I just overall felt like it provided something more to my team as an offensive check to Dragon since it's speedy. I felt better about having it on my team and I actually think it'll get more use. So um, I now have 30 remaining Z points and two remaining free agency trades that I can use as additional leverage for my trades. So enough of that, let's look at the teams we got. So you guys already know my team, but they're over there uh, on the left side of the screen if you guys are curious about uh, the draft. And uh, my opponent's draft, which is right up here, is uh, Excadrill, Clefable, Porygon 2, Sneasel, Mega Ampharos, Manaphy, Mien Xiao, Weezing, Celebi, Blaziken, and Fero. And his Z captains are Manaphy and Fero. So I have organized these uh, as I always do sort of by tier and sort of by likelihood that I think that they're gonna bring. So just because you're over on this side doesn't mean I think you're more likely than over on this side, but if you're a higher tier, I think it's more likely than a tier below it. So top tier, I think like there's no way these mons don't come, and that's Excadrill, Clefable, and P2. 
Uh, I think he wants Clefable because it's a decent switch in to quite a few of the things on my team. Uh, and I think the fairy type coverage is very appreciated in conjunction with the Excadrill, uh, the fairy steel part of the Dragon Fairy Steel core. P2 is a great switch in to tons of, it's so bulky that it's, it's a good switch in. Either Clefable or P2 can be good checks to Blacephalon. Sneasel, I don't see how Sneasel doesn't come. Haxorus is very threatening, just in general, and I think that he will want to check to that. It also can pursue Trap Blacephalon and Mew. And then we have Mega Ampharos. I think he'll bring Mega Ampharos because he might mistakenly look at my team and think that it can break through me very well because it's super powerful. Um, but we'll see about that. Manaphy is Manaphy, right? Like, it, it always could come, it always could do something. Tail Glow is very threatening. Uh, water types aren't particularly good against my team, uh, because I have a very good bulky water to sort of answer it. Um, and I resist Energy Ball. He could pack Psychic, but at a certain point he runs out of coverage options. If he's running Tail Glow, like, Water Stab, Ice Psychic, then I... I do pretty well okay against it with something like Scizor. So he's got to worry about his options that he has for it there. Uh, and so Toxapex is a good switch into that and, until proven. Otherwise, Mian Shao can come, but Toxapex really walls it. That doesn't mean it's not a good bring. It's very good offensively. As far as a fighting type is concerned, it's great at dealing with psychic types because it's got knockoff. It can be very powerful. Um, but I do have a lot of good answers for it, and I think he would be scared to run some of the more threatening Mian Shao sets, simply because, you know, he can't run Reckless High Jump Kick because I got a Ghost type, uh, and I have Toxapex, which walls it. It doesn't learn Earthquake, so there's very little it can do against Toxapex. Weezing, I think, could come. It's potentially a really good answer for Scizor, and, um, the... Poison typing can be helpful as a switch in against Shaman as well. Celebi, you know, it's a base 100 mon and base 100 mons are very versatile so he can use that to fit any need on his team so it wouldn't surprise me if he brought it but I have a lot of U-turners and I like momentum and if he's done his research on me he knows that he should be fearing quite how many things could outspeed and oko that thing with U-turn. Uh, so I think he should think twice about that one, but it's a potential bring, can run defensive sets, can run offensive sets, can run baton pass sets, lots of things it can do. Uh, and then we've got Blaziken, which uh, I'm not too worried about. He might bring it thinking that it's a good answer to Scizor, which it, in theory it could be. Um, but it's outsped by a lot of my team and beaten by most of my faster offensive threats. Doug Trio can trap it and Oko it. Haxorus uh, outspeeds it and can Oko it. I can um, Oko it with uh, Archeops. I can uh, switch into it with Toxapex. And the only way it has any hope in the world of breaking Toxapex is if it has attack boosting items. But if it has attack boosting items, then it's not running Scarf, which means it's easily killed by anything that outspeeds it. So there's no way for him to win in that situation with Blaziken. Uh, so I really don't see the likelihood of him bringing it, but I have lots of answers for it even if he does. And then there's Firo. Firo doesn't have great coverage, so as far as a Z-mon, its best options are just to Z something that it already has a pretty powerful option for. Uh, but I resist it pretty well around my team. It can't break Toxapex. It struggles with Mega Scizor. Um, and it's a base speed 100, which means I have multiple things that outspeed it, and it's not very bulky. So I really don't see it being a very likely bring on his part, but like I said, any of these sets do have their merits, and you can use some confusion there. Because I this is a conference match, uh, and a division match, I'm not gonna reveal every set that I talked over and thought about, uh, but I am gonna talk about what my game plan is for this week, and that is... Uh, Tefiti, the Shaman B unit, the um, Rabombi, Home Yowner, the Mew, Proto, the Mega Scizor, Toys R Us, the Haxorus, and DMX, the Toxapex. So uh, we can click through 
these mon and get rid of all the things I'm not bringing. So I'm not bringing Blacephalon this week. I'm not bringing Dugtrio this week. I'm not bringing Ditto this week or Rotom Fan or Archeops. So there is the six that I'm bringing. And let's sort of talk about what my plan is this week. My plan is he needs to build to beat Toxapex. And if he brings the wrong sets in an attempt to try and take on Toxapex, he leaves me windows to set up with potential setup mons, of which I have four. So he's at massive risk of any of my setup mons completely tearing his team apart if he doesn't bring the right sets. So DMX is running Scald, Toxic, Haze, and Recover. Uh, this is an amazing switch into Clefable until I know more about the Clefable. So if Clefable is trying to run a Calm Mind set, it cannot beat me. I can switch in on it on the turn that it Calm Minds. I can haze it off. Even if it's running Psychic, uh, it cannot break me. And I don't even have any special defense investment. An offensive Clefable doesn't even threaten DMX. I can just haze and, uh, and deal with it accordingly. Scald threatens the... Um, the Excadrill, of course, like it's not going to want to switch in against me, even though it's probably the best way he has to actually break me. Uh, I'm a good switch into the Manaphy. Uh, he can struggle against me with the Celebi. His best ways of dealing with this, honestly, are... Yeah, it's the Excadrill, but he really needs to be careful with the Scald. Um, I know Excadrill is coming, he's brought it every week, it's a very threatening Mon, and I really think Coach Z is gonna try and build around that being his kind of end game here. But it's just gonna struggle against DMX. Um, so, this thing can pretty much just sit in, throw off Scalds, throw off Toxics, kind of weaken him, and if he doesn't bring sets to answer it on his Mon, He'll never break it. So that's that's the DMX here. It it checks so many of his threats. It's really good switch into Sneasel. Really good switch into the Clefable and the Weezing and the Manaphy and just in general difficult for him to deal with. Moving on, um, let's go over to Tefiti. Tefiti is running a specially defensive set uh, with Seed Flare, Earth Power Toxic, and Synthesis. Natural Cure with Leftovers. It's running pretty bulky, um, mostly specially defensive bulk, uh, 201 HP with a little bit of defensive investment. The reason for this set is to be a switch into Mega Ampharos. Mega Ampharos doesn't have the coverage to try and break through this thing. I mean, it does have coverage for it, but it won't. It can't two hit KO me no matter what set it runs. I can threaten it with Earth Power. I can Toxic anything. I'm a good switch into the Clefable once I know it's not Calm Mind. I don't want to just let it set up Calm Minds against me. Um, I'm a good switch into the Porygon 2 because the Porygon 2 only at best learns Ice Beam for me. Uh, and I can Toxic it to threaten it back out. It's an answer to the Manaphy since Seed Flare hits it so hard. And uh, it's pretty good against the against lots of the mons that I have on it uh, against his team. So that's what I'm looking at Tefiti to do here, be a specially defensive check to a lot of his mons. And now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of my strategy for him this week, uh, which is massive setup. So if he ever gives me too much passivity, and I really think he will because he's got P2, Clefable, and maybe even Weezing. And it would not surprise me if he runs a very bulky Clefable P2 Weezing core with Excadrill, uh, Sneasel, and either Mega Ampharos or Manaphy. That's kind of the six or seven mon that I really predict he's bringing. B Unit is my first one. B Unit outspeeds everything on his team. Uh, with Moon Blast, Hidden Power Ground, Roost, and Quiver Dance, I'm Shield Dust, I'm Pixie Plate, and this thing can set up all over the P2. P2 cannot break it. Um, I get a couple of quiver dances off. He can't hope for any hacks on me with tri-attack because I have shield dust which prevents the secondary effects of those things. So if I can 
if he maybe brings in P2 as a switch to the proto, for example, then, uh, and I successfully navigate into B unit, I can set up all over its face. I outspeed the Sneasel, an Ice Shard does not kill, and I can Oko it with Moonblast. It um, is an offensive check for the Mega Ampharos. It can pressure lots of the Mons on his team. His best switch-ins are Excadrill, but I don't think he's going to want to be freely switching in his number one threat and basically his only chance at winning this game uh, just to take on my tier five Mon. There's other threats that he has to worry about. So uh, that's kind of B units thing here. He has a poison type in Weezing, of course, which he could switch in on B unit, but its special defense isn't great. And on top of that, the best things it can hope to do against me are Sludge Bomb or Flamethrower, and a couple of Quiver Dances, and those things won't be too hit KOing, and I'll be able to roost that off. So I think I can really pressure him with this, and it's, it has the potential to really take First of all, if he gives me too much of an opportunity to set up too many Quiver Dances, then Rabombi can literally just win the game. But what I'm looking for here is a speedy offensive check to a lot of his offensive mons, and um, potentially the opportunity to break one or two of his walls to set up for other Pokemon sweeping for the rest of the game. I think this thing will threaten out a Celebi if it comes in against it. I don't have Bug Stab, but you've got to be thinking when you see a Bug type Pokemon against Celebi, I need to get out of here. So that was the thought process there. My home Yowner set, guys, I'm really, I really love this one. Uh, I am running Specially Offensive, Psychic Sludge Wave, Vacuum Wave, and Nasty Plot with an Expert Belt. I don't need to worry about the Sneasel Pursuit trapping me here, guys, because Vacuum Wave with an Expert Belt Oko's Sneasel. So if he tries to do some hard switch in, bring the Sneasel in against Home Yowner, and I get a Nasty Plot up, and I just Vacuum Wave kill that thing outright when he's like clicking Pursuit, or something like that to try and take advantage, boom, that thing goes down and really neuters his entire offensive pot uh, potential there. So I'm really excited about that. Psychic and Sludge Wave, um, after that Vacuum Wave coverage, handle everything else. Psychic, the only things that resist it are Excadrill and Sneasel, both of which are weak to Vacuum Wave. Uh, and Sludge Wave is to provide me the additional offensive power I need to break through the things that resist Psychic, which are Celebi and Clefable. Look, Clefable doesn't resist Psychic, but I can fail to two-hit KO if it's an unaware set but uh, I don't have that problem with Expert Belt Sludge Wave. So really looking forward to this set. I think it puts in a lot of work. Um, I then have Proto. Proto is running Bullet Punch, Super Power, U-Turn, and Swords Dance. I wanted the additional priority. He's a bulky offensive set with a weird speed investment just to make sure that nothing uh, in the lower speed tiers randomly builds just enough speed to outspeed it. Uh, it would take quite a heavy- he has several 60 base speed mons. Uh, I'm 65 pre-mega pre evolution and 75 after, so I can really take advantage of a lot of those speed tiers that he has. Bullet Punch Superpower U-Turn Swords Dance. This set has uh, evolved a little bit in my thinking. At one point I had Defog on there, then I realized I didn't really need it. I'm not gonna be doing a ton of switching around um, just, like needlessly and his best stealth rocker if Clefable's a stealth rocker it kind of neuters its ability to also be a setup mon which means I'm not scared of it and I just I'm not that worried about stealth rocks this week so I didn't feel the need to run defog U-turn uh, I really like the possibility for a momentum that I can get because scissor can force quite a lot of switches bullet punch and superpower with swords dance um, I know Swords Dance Superpower is like kind of like, what are you thinking, one boosts, one negates, uh, but a Swords Dance Superpower has the chance to break AP2 in one hit. Superpower Oko's Excadrill without any boosts, which is good. I'm a good Excadrill switch in, uh, being a bulky Scizor. Uh, and that's mostly what Superpower is there for. Bullet Punch, uh, it with this um, offensive investment, immediately threatens the Clefable, but also after a, after a Swords Dance, Oko's it. 
and the bullet punch helps in case he sits on the Sneasel until the late game and works around some of my other mons uh, and other attempts to sweep him don't pan out, then this is the best option I have to deal with Sneasel late game if I end up, if he ends up sitting on Sneasel then I can end up sitting on Scizor. My big worry here is uh, Scizor can be threatened by Clefable and Weezing because both of them learn Flamethrower. So I need to be careful with that and make sure that I don't let myself needlessly switch in against them uh, and just take a Flamethrower for no reason. Neither of them OCO with those moves, but the coverage can definitely present a problem for me. And the last mon I have is Haxorus. Uh, Poisonium Z, Outrage, Earthquake, Poison Jab, Dragon Dance uh, with Mold Breaker. Thanks to Mold Breaker, I can net a super effective Earthquake against the Weezing. So Weezing, though I won't one hit KO it and it can potentially um, hit back with a Will-O-Wisp, just a little bit of chip against that Weezing. It doesn't have reliable recovery. A little bit of chip and the EQ will OCO it after a Dragon Dance. I can set up a Dragon Dance against quite a few of his threats. Um, most notably the P2, I can do it in the face of um, a thing that I think is going to force a switch. And But more importantly, it's it has immediate threatening power because of its really high base attack, so I don't necessarily need the Dragon Dance, but it does afford me the opportunity if I know I can survive a hit, get a Dragon Dance off, threaten out... Uh, any of the remaining members of his team and really just push the button from there. It's a good switch in or a good check to the uh, Mega Ampharos since I will outspeed it and I can threaten it with EQ or Outrage. Obviously, I'm not going to want to be clicking Outrage until I know the Clef is gone, but I can pop off um, Poisonium Z Poison Jab and that does about 80% to a max defensive Clefable. So get off a Dragon Dance uh, and once I've scouted to make sure that he's not going to switch out fearing the Poisonium, I can just pop off that Poisonium Z Poison Jab, take out the Clefable, and it's off to the races with a lot of my other setup mons. A lot of this game revolves around weaken one of the only checks some of these other setup mons have, and once it's weakened, the setup mons can just blow through the rest of his team, and I, I can do that with Home Yowner or B Unit. Proto and Toys R Us are also powerful, immediate threatening options. DMX is an amazing whittler this week because he's going to really have to sacrifice a lot to try and break it. And then Tefiti is my backup uh, Mega Ampharos at switch in and Manaphy check. So uh, if either of those mons get out of hand, Tefiti can handle them. So that's kind of, I'm going to be sitting on Tefiti until I know that those mons are either no longer a threat or uh, they're not there, in which case I can really play aggressively with Defeaty. I know it doesn't have offensive investment, but you always need to be worried about the 40% uh, special defense drop from Seed Flare, because uh, that's going to force some switches and give me some opportunities to... Uh, I really want to be throwing off a few Toxics, and I really need to make sure that I figure out as soon as possible whether or not that Clefable is... Um, unaware or magic guard. That's going to be really important for me to figure out. But that's my plan this week, guys. Let me know what you think of that in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.